Uh, any thoughts about uh, the Georgia football team? If you've done any uh, research at this point, I have, and uh, it's uh, it's not fun research. There aren't many holes to uh, to plug at for Georgia, honestly. Um, I, if we want to talk about holes, the one thing that I think Michigan can do to greatly in increase their chances is get to Stetson Barrett. I, I think that he is a, the weak part of their uh, – of their. did I say that right or is, did, is it Barrett Stetson? Stetson Bennett. St Stetson Bennett. Sorry. There you go. Um, it, the uh, He's the weak point on that offense or of the team. He's not really a strength of that offense. And so Michigan, what they've done to win games this year is get to the quarterback. If they can get to the quarterback, then – Maybe all of a sudden Georgia's game plan doesn't go, you know, accordingly. But I also could see them just overpowering Michigan's defensive line at some point, even though Michigan's defensive line is their strength. You know, their strength is their edge rushers. It's not up the middle plugging everything, even though they've done that pretty well in the last few weeks. I could see Georgia manhandling them a little bit. But if they wanted to win, they could get to uh, the quarterback and really, you know, disrupt things in the backfield. Um, on the other side of the ball, I, I just don't, I, I don't know. We will see if Josh Gaddis is as good as advertised or if he's going to run into a buzzsaw here because they've been able to run the ball in just about every game, except for against Michigan state, which was their loss. Right. And so Georgia's defense is not just going to open up the alleys and let them run. If Michigan isn't able to run the ball. What are they going to do? Are they, is Cade McNamara still, you know, is he able to throw it all over them? Can they open it up? Can they be creative? That's where the questions are going to be. And it's been that question all year long. And Josh Gaddis has been able to answer it, but they haven't seen a defense like this. They've seen some pretty dang good defenses in Penn state and Iowa, even in Michigan state, but they, they haven't seen a defense quite this talented. Yeah, and throw Wisconsin, of course, into that mix, too. And, um, yeah, th those are excellent defenses, all three of them. I think those are three of the 10 to 12 best defenses in the country, but Georgia's probably still the best defense in the country because you take all the things that those other defenses are, plus you just add on, like, waves and waves of NFL talent instead of, like, five or six dudes. It's, it's double that, something totally. in that range. Yeah, I will I mean, tell you this, Justin, that um, if if um, the Michigan offensive coaching staff wants to check out uh, that that Alabama tape and to see how they blocked Georgia, that whatever they did, because they haven't been able to block in a ton of games this year at Alabama. And I just got off the line with an Alabama guy. And that was one of my main questions. You know, they they got manhandled up front. They couldn't do anything against Auburn, like one yard a carry sacks all over the place and that wasn't just an aberration this is auburn and this is lsu and this is a couple other games they couldn't do anything up front their offensive line was not getting the job done and then they they take on what's supposed to be the best front in college football and they i don't think they they didn't run the ball down their throats but it was more about pass protection and just having all day to to throw the ball downfield yeah, and guess what? Josh Gaddis came from Alabama, so I'm hoping he's got a couple phone numbers in his uh, in his iPhone that he can dial up. But I'm not sure Nick Saban, uh, when he has the chance to play Michigan in the in the national championship, is uh, giving out too many secrets at this point. Um, but you know, I it's just wild to me the Georgia Alabama thing. Georgia, no matter they could have a better you know, a better player at every single position. And for whatever reason, once they get to that game, the, I mean, this was the perfect year. They had everything. They had the best defense they've ever had. They finally had some offense that could move the ball. And then like, it just, they just freeze up when they get to that game. I don't understand it. It's crazy. Yeah. They've played the better football all year. Uh, I did a breakdown. They had four common opponents there was no comparison between how Georgia handled those four opponents in Alabama. Uh, Alabama struggled against all of them. Georgia smashed all of them. Uh, I can't uh, figure it out, but um, they may have one more shot this year. We'll see. So Michigan's an eight-point underdog. Are you pretty 
comfortable with that or think it's fair or valid? I think it's fair. I think it's pretty fair. I mean, I, it started at what? Seven, seven and a half. I think it's moved to eight. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's egregious. Um, touchdown favorite would, would be what I, what I would guess, but Michigan is 11 and two against the spread this year. And they've been favored in all of those, except for one at Penn state, I want to say, and two, at, uh, against Ohio state. Um, so they, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty good against the spread. And, and I, Listen, I, I don't know if Michigan's going to win this game, but they are a determined group of young men that, led by Aiden Hutchinson, are not just going to give up and say, hey, Georgia's the better team where you know, we, we don't stand a chance. They're going to give them a run for their money. You can be sure of that. So it, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. This is the first time, Justin, in a long time that I'm more confident – of Michigan's mindset and psyche going into a big game than the opponent, not to knock on Georgia. I'm just questioning it. I just don't know if they felt supremely confident. And now this Alabama loss has them wondering, okay, are we really as good as we thought we were? And we're not invincible, you know, that that could work one way or the other for them. Either, either is going to knock their confidence down in a negative way, or it's a wake up call where, Oh, okay. We're not as good as we thought, but we are good. And we just need to, you know, get back to the grindstone and, and get ready for this game where Michigan, they've just been picking off these difficult opponents. And, and I just think they're battle tested and they know, I don't think they're too full of themselves, but they're, they're at a good place where they're confident. They know they're good and they know that they got to work extremely hard and prepare and be ready. Yeah, if you uh, if you go listen to our uh, our podcast with Joel Honigford, uh, he's a, a Michigan tight end, and he came out and said right after that Ohio State win, he just said, "We just knew that we were going to win that game. There was no doubt in anyone's mind that they were going to win that game, and it was very apparent on the field that that's how they felt, you know. And I think they felt that way all the way through, um, and so you know." I don't think it's this weird thing where they are confident, but not like cocky and overconfident. It, it's this thing where they just like have this togetherness and this group feeling. And I think it's been ever since Michigan state, Aiden Hutchinson came out and said that in an interview as well uh, recently, where he said they, he doesn't think they come out and beat Ohio state or win the, the big 10, if they don't lose to a uh, Michigan state back, uh, you know, in October, because he said that was the game where they said, I don't like that feeling. We should have won that game. It was the one where it was like, we're not letting that happen again. And now we look at them, look at where they're at now. So I definitely think that is the case for Michigan. And that's a feeling, as you said, we never had that feeling with Michigan before. It was always, they can't show up in the big game. They've never been here. They don't know how to do it. They aren't battle tested. They aren't tough. It's a very different mindset for Michigan. Now for Georgia, I think me and a lot of other people are scared that George is going to come out pissed off and say, Hey, we want another chance at Bama. We're going to run through Michigan and to get there. And so there's definitely a chance of that happening, but I could also see, you know, they didn't look like they wanted to be there in the fourth quarter against Alabama either. And so maybe there there's a lot of time between the big, you know, the championship games and this uh, college football playoff. It can go very well or it can go very poorly. Michigan can maybe let the steam kind of burn off a little bit and they aren't rolling anymore. And all of a sudden you take a step back and you don't have that feeling uh, or they keep it rolling, you know, and it goes the same way for Georgia. They can, all right, let's get it together. We still have a chance for a national title or it's a, eh, maybe we weren't the best defense in the country. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, can we actually win this national title? We we've got to play Bama again. We don't even really want to. What's the point? You know, type of a thing. Yeah, the only situation in sports I can think of where you roll through the season and play regularly, and then you get to sit for a month and until you play again.